Welcome to the channel. If you're here, odds are you're dealing with some extruding issues on your K1 Max, just like I was. You start a print, everything seems to be going fine. You check back later, and it's printing in error, not extruding anything. At first, I thought it was just a clog nozzle. No big deal. I'd clear it out, reload the filament, and sometimes it would work, but more often than not, the jam would come back. I replaced the hot end with the Micro Swiss Flowtech upgrade kit, thinking that might uh, fix the problem. And it did a little bit, but the jam still came back. The only way I could reliably get the machine to run was if I slowed the print speeds way down. And if I wanted the printer to run that slow, I would just dust off my old Ender 3. So because of this, my K1 Max ended up sitting on the sidelines for quite a while, and I didn't really use it all that much. Then I came across an upgrade that caught my attention. An extruder called Cyclops by Devil Design. People were saying great things about it, so I thought I'd give it a try. It's a drop-in replacement, but there is a little bit of assembly required. So in this video, I'm gonna go through the full build process and hopefully by the end, get the printer running the way it was meant to be. So let's jump in and start putting it together. My kit showed up in two different boxes. The first one had all the parts for the build separated into plastic bags and the second one contains the new stepper motor. You need to print the body of the extruder yourself and you can download the uh, file from printables. It's recommended that you print it out of a stronger material like ABS or ASA. Uh, I printed mine out of uh, glass fiber nylon because I still had some left over from a project I did before. The first step is installing these threaded inserts. Uh, you just need a soldering iron to heat them up and press them into the part. You just have to make sure you get them flush to the surface when you insert them and that they're straight. The next step is inserting the front bearing. Uh, this is a press fit, so it's pretty tight going in, but I found just gently tapping with a hammer uh, worked just fine. Now the drive shaft, uh, one of the drive gears, and the rear bearing all get assembled and then gets pressed into the uh, enclosure. What I found, it's kind of hard to press it in uh, this way the, to get the bearing to seat. So what I ended up finding works better is to place the drive gear inside the um, body of the extruder uh, and then press the bearing into place with your hands and then uh, put the shaft in between all of it. When you're inserting the drive shaft at the end, try to have the flat spot facing out the opening. Uh, this will be important later and just make the assembly easier. Now the three orbital gears get assembled. Uh, each one gets a bearing pressed into it and then they all get assembled onto the output shaft. Now the gear housing uh, gets put on, but before you do that, you have to uh, apply grease to the gears. Uh, they don't say which type of grease to use or supply any of the kit. So I'm just using a white grease, which is a general all purpose light duty grease, which should be fine. Uh, whatever you use, just make sure it's compatible with plastic and it's not gonna cause any issues. Next, the new stepper motor gets attached. It goes on to the back of the housing and then two bolts go through the front to hold it in place. Now onto the idler arm. First, the idler gear gets a bushing inserted into it. Then the gear gets inserted into the idler arm and a uh, pin gets driven through to hold it into place. The pin is also press fit and just needs to be tapped in with a hammer. Next, the filament guide gets inserted into the extruder body. Uh, this gets threaded in until it just touches the uh, gear on the inside and then gets backed off about a half turn or so. You want it to be as close as you can to the gear without actually touching it. Now the set screw needs to be uh, 
put into the drive gear to lock it onto the drive shaft. Uh, first, you insert a piece of filament to align the uh, drive gear with the uh, filament path. The set screw needs to be inserted on the flat spot of the drive shaft. This is why I mentioned earlier on you want to have this facing forward because it's very difficult to get this aligned if you did it. It's not impossible, but it's not easy. Now the idler arm gets attached by using a press fit pin, just like the uh, pin that was used to hold the idler gear in. The last step is screwing in the tension spring into the idler arm and the uh, assembly is complete. Next steps are installing the new extruder into the machine. So first we have to get the old extruder out. The back cover that's covering the extruder can just be pulled off, it's just clipped into place. And then there's three screws on the sides that hold the extruder in. After that, the extruder can just be slid straight up, except uh, I forgot to get to the plug, you gotta take the front cover off. So we'll move up there first. To get the front cover off, there's two screws, one on each side. Uh, one's easy to get to, the other one is behind the LiDAR sensor, so you have to take that off first, which is held by two screws on the top. With the cover out of the way, you just have to unplug the uh, old extruder and then you can pull it out. In the instructions, they talk about working with the PTFE tube. Um, because I, I'm using the Micro Swiss hot end, I don't have that anymore. Now I have the uh, a brass tube there, so I skip that step. On the one side of the carriage, you have to trim off this little tab uh, because it'll get in the way of the new extruder as you slide it in. It's pretty easy just to trim off with a uh, pair of side cutters and then just uh, make sure it's sanded smooth. then the extruder should just slide into place. I actually had a little bit of problem here because I didn't get the heat inserts pressed in flush with the um, body. So I had to go back and push them in a little bit farther. Once I did that, it assembled no problem. Once the extruder is pressed all the way in, it's just a matter of putting the three bolts back in on the sides and plugging the cable back in. Um, after that, just reassemble everything. I did run into one issue that it seems no one's talking about because I haven't seen it mentioned in any other review or instructions for this and it's not listed in the manuals either. Uh, your P the PTF tube at the top has nothing to connect to. There's a hole that it looks like it should take a um, connector that's like on the uh, existing um, extruder, except uh, there's nothing in the kit for this. And I do have uh, ones lying around and the hole is too small for uh, the one version where the PTF tube can go all the way through. And it's too big for the version where uh, the tube stops inside of it. So I'm not sure what the actual plan or how this is supposed to work. Uh, my workaround is I print out a little spacer that will make that hole smaller to fit the smaller size of the uh, um, adapter that holds onto the tube. And I just glued it into place. The adapter ended up being uh, eight millimeters on the outer air uh, diameter, 5.5 millimeters on the inner, and it's about five mi millimeters tall. Um, that'll just thread on to the um, PTF holder, and then you can just glue it into place. I'm using the thinner version of these uh, risers you can print to raise the glass surface to get it off the top of the tube. And with this setup now, it's uh, causing it to touch again. So I went and found the uh, standard size, the bigger ones, and I'm printing those out to uh, go in place. While I'm at it, I wanted to address another problem I had with this. 
The way they have the tube coming out of the back, it has a real big kink in the line, and I've always had a problem feeding um, the filament into the tube, especially trying to get it into the um, Rhino sensor. So what I decided to do is I'm just going to put a new hole in the side of the um, uh, machine, so that way it's a straight shot right in. The last step before you can start printing is you need to make a few adjustments to this, the software to account for the new motor and the different gearing ratio. What they didn't mention in the instructions is that the default uh, software on the printer itself doesn't allow you to do this because it's a stripped down version of Clipper or at least the interfaces. You can't access the information you need to. So you need to root the machine and um, install the full clipper now this isn't difficult they allow you to do this um, i found instructions from this other video that i'm going to link down in the description instead of me explaining it he does a great job explaining what to do but it's very simple uh, if you watch the video that i've attached it explains everything you do it's pretty plug and play once that's done um, you just need to go in and follow the instructions to change the uh, values they tell you to one uh, thing i'll note in the instructions uh, there's a command that's nozzle MCU. They tell you to put a, a exclamation point in front of it, which this controls the direction the extruder motor drives. So putting the exclamation point tells it to turn it in the opposite direction. For some reason, I didn't need to do that. And I'm not sure if you will either, but uh, I'll explain how I found this out when we look at the first print. And now before we do some test prints, I'm going to uh, install the new risers that finished printing so that way it clears the uh, tube and it's not touching the top of the glass. So when I was looking at this first cube, at first the print looked fine, but then I noticed on the top of it, there's quite a bit of under extrusion, which I was kind of bummed about. Uh, I ended up, this was late at night, so I just shut the machine off and we'll look at it in the morning. Uh, and in the morning when I started it back up and tried to print, nothing was printing, which was even a bigger bummer. And then I noticed that the extruder was running backwards. So what had happened is when I made the changes, I saved it, but I never rebooted Clipper. So the changes never took into effect. So this print was running with the old settings, which is why it wasn't extruding correctly, and which is why I found out I didn't need to switch the direction. So once I fixed all that, um, it printed uh, much better. So at this point, I figured I might as well go through a calibration test to get everything figured out properly. So I started with the extrusion test in uh, Orca Slicer. The zero, plus five, and minus five settings were all pretty close. I couldn't really tell that much of a difference. So I just decided to leave the settings as, a, as they were. Next, I ran the uh, pressure advance test. And again, these settings were pretty close. I didn't have to change them very much. Then I ran a max flow rate test. And I ran this from 10 up to 30. And really, I didn't notice it, uh, any problems at all. Like it capped out the top. And even at 30, uh, it looks pretty good. Um, I ended up dialing it back. That seems a bit excessive. But uh, I was kind of surprised that it didn't really show uh, much issue running that fast. So with the new settings dialed in, I tried a couple different test prints. This is just a standard PLA from a local supplier, and I'm running this at a max volumetric flow rate of 20. The cube looks much better than the original one I printed. No major issues I see with it, and uh, its dimensional accuracy is pretty decent. The Benchy is a pretty good Benchy. There's a little bit of stringing, so I think I need to go in and uh, adjust the settings for that. But besides that, I don't see any issues. And as for the tolerance test, um, they all move uh, fine, except the very last one, the 0.15. That one's stuck in place, so maybe there's a little bit of adjusting I can do to dial this in. 
Next I try and go a little faster. So now I'm using some Sunlu high speed filament. And this I'm running at a volumetric max speed of I think 28, a little higher than it's recommended, but let's see what happens. Cube looks pretty good and the dimensions are accurate. The benchy also looks pretty good. There's uh, still some stringing like there was before. I think I'm pushing it, kind of hitting the, the max limit. You're starting to see some uh, layer lines more than before, but I mean, it's still pretty decent. For a final test, I wanted to try something that was more regular, not just a test print. I wanted to print something that was bigger that would run for several hours, because uh, that's usually when the uh, problems would occur. Um, so let's see how this turned out. And once I got all the supports off, uh, this turned out pretty great. There's no real issues with it. Again, a little bit of stringing. I think I'm pushing it a little faster than I should. I probably, I, I ended up turning back down, I think 25, uh, but this still looks great. Also, if you want to know where I got this uh, Iron Man bobblehead figure, uh, you're going to have to stay tuned to my next video where I show where this came from. So to wrap this up, first I want to say, if you made it this far, you're amazing. Thanks for sticking with me. And as far as the upgrade, I'm really happy with the results. I haven't been able to print that these speeds are reliably since I got my K1 Max. Now, I finally feel like I can trust the machine to finish jobs that I give it. The assembly process has a few steps in it between assembling the extruder and then getting clipper on the machine. But really, it's not that complicated. It's just a lot of steps to go through. So if you're thinking about uh, tackling this upgrade, I say go ahead and do it. So what are your thoughts on the extruder and the upgrade process? Uh, let me know in the comments. Uh, start your comment with the word upgrade, so I know you got this far. And if you like these style of videos that I do, uh, consider hitting that like button. It really helps the channel grow. And if you're having these extruder issues with your machine, you should uh, check out this video here, which is how I fixed the bed leveling problem I had with the machine that you probably are also having. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.